You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everyone. It is David George Brooke, That Gratitude Guy, with the That Gratitude Guy podcast today. I'm your host, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can expect a deeper dive into gratitude's immense power, a gratitude tip of the show, or maybe a gratitude nugget. Uh, how you can become a gratitude believer, and then one to three takeaways from today's show or today's guest. My podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and any other places where you get your podcasts. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. I so appreciate that. And people ask me about gratitude journals a lot. To purchase a gratitude journal or to find out more about my gratitude speaking, keynotes, what have you, group coaching, one-on-one coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. So let me get on with the show and introduce you to my guest. Excited to have my guest on today. Of course, I guess if I wasn't excited, they wouldn't be a guest. So that's always a good thing. Chris Yee, MD, is a physician coach and the founder of Life Abundant Consulting, LLC. His work is shifting how medical professionals and patients engage so that patients become the leader of their own journey to improved health. He is certified in the Brave Thinking Institute coaching program, which has helped thousands of people discover renewed health, vigor, and abundance by leveraging their inner power to create an outer world they love. He practices medicine at Seattle Public Health as a lead physician, medical resident teacher, and team wellness and culture coach. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Such an honor to be here, David. Thank you. So it's an honor to have you on here. And, and I always kind of start out too, this is an interesting always piece up front is how did you and I meet? Because I know how we did. How do you remember you and I getting connected? Well, we met through a common friend. Um, she's actually my partner in believing, which is a term I'd love to explain to other people. But um, Faith Ireland, who is a retired Washington State Supreme Court Justice, she was a guest on your podcast before. Yes. Um, that's how we met, and she told me about you, um, that gratitude guy. And there's one thing that I find to be something I'm looking for in my life at all times, and that is simplicity and powerful. And when I heard that somebody out there is spending this much energy around something so powerful as gratitude. I said, I got to know this guy. <laughs> I got to <laughs> know him and know how he he works and functions in the world. So I got a chance to listen to some of your coaching and some of your speeches. And I'm just so thrilled to um, be able to get to know you better and to get to know your audience. Ah, thank you, Chris. Yes, it's something that uh, one of the things I think about is people that get to be my age, I sometimes worry when they lose their purpose. And I had such a purpose for about 10 years. I've done this professionally. I, I was kind of wanted to be a speaker when I was really young. And it took me about 45 years to actually get the guts to do it. But in going out and doing that in the last seven, eight, nine years, it's given me such a purpose. And gosh, I, I just think it's, I've got friends and acquaintances that talk about retirement in this pot of gold, like it's some sort of, you know, they get to the end of the rainbow. And I, I just don't know. I think that's kind of problematic. But uh, I just think that purpose thing is so important. So speaking of which, partner in believing, tell me about that. What does that mean? Okay, well, thank you for asking. A partner in believing is somebody who you trust and who will be willing to hold the thing that you hold in your mind um, to be what you would love in your life. Now, mm -hmm. some people experience loving their life in this very moment. And that comes with the experience and activation of gratitude for sure. And at the same time, people also hold a part of their life that they would love to experience. Um, and that often comes from a longing or a discontent and utilizing those signals of growth to visualize or uh, think about how they would love their life to be in the future. And a partner in believing is someone who holds that, that, that same belief and possibility for you. 
And it might be somebody you meet um, regularly and talk about um, how you are living into what your values are um, or what your progress is and your dreams. And uh, so Faith Ireland is one of those people for me, a partner in believing. Excellent. And then how has gratitude, we've mentioned that a couple of times too, how has that played a part of in Chris's life in terms of a mindset or attitude? Has it always been a practice or in the back of your mind or did it come on later in life? That is a really great question. And I always like to talk a little bit about when gratitude became a part of my life and what my life was like before gratitude. And I was a doctor having worked for 10 years. And I would have this recurrent experience in my life. And my wife um, jokingly called it chronic dissatisfaction. Wow. And what would happen physically in every morning, I'd wake up and I would wake up and my mind would immediately shift. This is before I, I found gratitude. It would immediately shift to what's wrong today. Wow. It would also go to, Chris, what's wrong with you? And how can I find the evidence that you are actually flawed and there's something wrong with you? And my mind would immediately click into trying to find all the evidence from the past um, or what's going to happen for today to prove that there's something wrong with me. Wow. And so this experience would lead me to start to look for answers. And where would I go for answers? I don't know if other people or other viewers who are listening to this do this, but I used to wake up in the morning and I'd get my phone out and I'd start looking for answers. It was so odd. And I would, first thing I'd do, I'd click on my, my, my email and say, oh, is there an answer here for, for my life? Is there something that's gonna guide me to know what it is I'm supposed to show up as today? And if that didn't work, then I would go to the radio. I'd turn the radio on immediately in the morning time and start listening like, oh, something guide me to know how I'm supposed to be showing up in the world today. And it was at a point where it became so painful and difficult for me that I would be waking up you know, at three or four in the morning regularly, um, always seeking this evidence for, for flaw in my life. And um, you know, I had a beautiful life at the time. Um, I was doing really well in my practice as a doctor. Um, I had a beautiful wife and two beautiful kids, and I was going through these motions that were actually, um, I felt nothing for. There was like no feeling in, in that experience at all. And so I kind of came to this moment of pain. <laughs> I can remember it in August, end of August of 2017, where I just realized that, that I was not living life. I, I felt I did not feel life at all. And um, it was kind of a crucial moment for me. So I um, found I had to do something and I ended up um, quitting my job um, that I was working for for 10 years. And from there, I started to learn about how we can do practices with our mind to, to access what I like to call the abundance of the world or the, of the universe. And one of those practices is to understand gratitude and to be able to have a practice of gratitude in our life so that we can see life from a different place, so that we can see the wholeness of, our, of who we are as, as whole human beings, um, that we can see the beauty and joy that's right in front of us. And you know, a small example of this would be, I would use, you know, used to re read books to my girls before bed. And before this practice of gratitude, I'd go through the motions, but I would just try to get out of there as fast as possible so I could get onto what's important to me, I guess, at the time, which was to cover whatever, you know, um, pain I was feeling, which was to eat, eat some ice cream and, and watch some Netflix. So, uh, you know, there was going through this experience. But then once I started to cultivate this practice of gratitude and seeing the world from this abundant perspective, now I'm doing the exact same thing, which is to read to my kids. But the experience is totally different now. Now, when I'm reading to my kids, I'm completely present. I'm feeling the joy in the moment. I'm feeling this fulfillment of this, this really important act that I wasn't valuing in the past. So how it's played a part in my life, I just, I, I can't say um, how important it is to have this lens of gratitude um, and how it's shifted 
how I live life and then also how I relate to others um, in part with my patients, in part with um, the doctors I train, um, and of course, all my coaching clients. Gosh, that's well said and so important too. Did you say August of 2017 was when you mm -hmm. quit your job? Yeah, so, that, so that was after 10 years. And when you made a shift like that, and you hear people say stuff about making a shift or a transition or what have you, do you recall back in August of 2017, was it something that was just building up brick by brick by brick? And finally, on August 5th, 2017, I'm going to quit my job and do, you know, go in a new direction. Did you wake up one day or was it just sort of a slow process that finally the needle just went to the other side back in August? Yeah, I know it was a slow, it was a slow process. It was mm -hmm. night after day after day of, of this chronic being dissatisfied and thinking there should be more and why isn't there more and what's wrong with me and um, asking these questions of, of attaining. I mean, you know, so it's for me, you know, I set these goals, you know, in my life. And some of those goals were to become a doctor. Some of those goals were to get married. Some of those goals were to have kids, you know, and it was almost like the worthiness of who I was was based on accomplishments, you know, but then you get these accomplishments and then, and then you still like, oh, but what's, it's not, it's not enough still, right. you know, and it was at that point that I realized that there is enough right now, there is abundance right now, there is life living right now. Um, and again, you know, through the practice of gratitude, you get to recognize that and allow that into your life. And it's not to say that there isn't more that I strive for and, and long to be, but I get to experience a fulfillment of life as we all experience a fulfillment of life at different times of the day, um, while also you know, having a, a vision for what we would love to have in our future. Right. And I think sometimes I'm always curious about when I look back on my past or anybody else's past about you don't want to, I've said in talks before, you, you have some garbage in your life and you drive over it. And some people make a mistake. They pick it up behind them and put it in front of them and drive over it again. You know, they're still talking about the ex-spouse that just has made their life miserable. They've been divorced for 10 years or something. So we don't want to, we want to process it and get it out, out of the way. And I, I mentioned too, the windshield of the cars two feet deep, four feet wide, the rear view mirror is two inches by five inches. Well, where should we spend our focus? Mostly on the windshield and, and learn from the rear view mirror. Occasionally, if there's blue lights flashing, pull over. But for the most part, you're going forward. But I am curious, though, with the what's wrong today and what's wrong with me, do you have any idea? Because I think sometimes it's interesting to know where it came from. Was it parents? Was it upbringing? Was it school? Was it a particular mindset or something that caused you to go down this road of what's wrong with me? Or I, I don't know if I want to say assign blame, but maybe to understand how, how it came about for you, with especially having as many things going on as you did. Wow. You know, that's a fascinating question. On one hand, I feel like this is a common direction that many human brains go through based on, you know, millennia of, of, of evolution. Um, and that is this thing that I'm looking at could be a, a, a stick or it could be a snake, but I'm going to err on the side of danger, right? I'm going to err on the side of snake because that will keep me the safest. And so I think that in a way our brains are set towards the negative bias, like, um, there's something wrong here. I need to fix it. Um, something bad is going to happen. I'm going to need to prepare for this thing. And so I don't know if the other viewers feel this, this same um, bias towards something wrong is going to happen, but it certainly was for me. I, I can't necessarily pinpoint it to a, um, a particular paradigm that I grew up with or a belief system, um, though certainly you know, where my mind is now is a development of all those things, but I can't necessarily say it's from one particular um, experience in my past. I Interesting. And, there, and I asked a little bit from a selfish standpoint, because I think of my parents, uh, they both died when I was in my 20s. And my mom was very positive. My dad was very negative. And I've said it on this podcast before, I'd say to my dad, good morning. And he'd go, what's good about it? And then I'd say, it's, it's such a beautiful day. It's, he says, it's going to rain tomorrow. And he just always, and so I, I wanted, I was so aware of what I didn't want to be. I wanted to be the person that had the smile on his face, the energetic get up, the, it's a brand new day and just be glad you got up. And, and of course, later that focused in on gratitude too, but, but speaking of gratitude, so who introduced you kind of to the practice of gratitude? How did that come into Chris's life? 
Hmm. Well, that mostly came what I will say serendipitously, but you know, if you are a believer of the divine, maybe it was a divine moment for me. Mm. And that was, I would say a couple of weeks after I quit my job and was feeling lost. Um, and this was the interesting thing. You know, I took this action of quitting my job thinking that my job was the cause of my discontent. Mm. That I didn't have enough time to do the things I wanted to do with my, my family or whatever. Um, but what I realized was when I quit my job, I actually had more time with the source of the problem. Oh, really? You know what the source of the problem was? What? It was me. <laughs> ah, more time with Chris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. So I, I was being around me more and recognizing, wow, that is actually not helping that much. And so what I really needed was a, a shift in my mind, a shift in how I saw the world, um, a shift in um, recognizing what I value and what my purpose is in this world as I experience it, as I would love it to be, as I choose it to be. And so the skills that I learned from that was from the Brave Thinking Institute as my, my sister, who's my best friend, said, hey, are you interested in going to this weekend workshop, learning a little bit about dream building? I'm like, Phew, sounds like a perfect time for me. And, I would, and really, I just wanted to be with my sister. That was my, my biggest thing at this time of, of challenge. And so I went to the Brave Thinking Institute. We um, went to this powerful weekend and I started to be coached. And I, not, I never been coached before. I didn't even know what coaching was. You know, I knew about therapy, but, but coaching, never heard of it. But I started to experience this, this whole technology of how we can build the skill of thinking a certain way so that we can know what it is that we love in our life, what we value strongly in our life, and then how to make progress towards that thing. You know, and at the time I realized that I thought it was my job, but it was actually the disconnection with my family. That's what I realized was most important to me. And so the dream that I built was, I wanna be with my family in a, in a, in a really meaningful way. I want my kids to be glo global citizens of the world. I wanna travel the world. And so we jumped up this idea of traveling around the world for six months, going to see friends and seeing how other people experience abundance in their life, even when they have less. Um, and that was always been a big question in my mind as I was you know, fortunate enough to travel to some third world countries and, and see the smiles on people's faces who had much less money, who had much less um, material things than we do here in the United States, but they're smiling and they're laughing and they're enjoying. And I can see that they're experiencing life and living life with less material things. And so I wanted my kids to be exposed to other cultures. And so we traveled around the world for six months. And that was the kind of the first step in me understanding like, oh my gosh, I can actually create a life that I love. I can actually imagine something that I, that I value and love and, and go and create that thing. So that was really the, the beginning of understanding um, gratitude and some of the, the, the skills involved in being able to change my mind to experience and to trust um, who I am and um, what I value and to um, express myself and, um, you know, I. I think Bruce Lee, you know, his highest value was to express yourself. And I, and I, and I find that to be something that I hold to as well, um, that we all have something inside of us that's unique. And um, the greatest value that we can give to the world is to be able to express that uniqueness. Yes, that's a great point. And, and I want to talk a little bit about the Brave Thinking Institute in a minute, but I want to come back to something. One of the things I've mentioned in my talks, uh, depending on how much time I have, is the five regrets of the dying. And it was a survey they did of people that are 90 to 95 years old. What were their biggest regrets? And they came up with kind of the top five. And one was, I wish I would uh, kept better in touch with my friends. And uh, another one was, I wish I hadn't worked so hard, which I thought was always kind of interesting. And so many people dedicated their life. Now they're in their 90s and they're going to pass away. But what the other one that I really enjoyed is, I wish I'd lived a life true to myself and not what other people had thought for me. But probably at the top of the list for me of the five was, I wish I'd taken more chances in life. So you're a doctor, you're heading down the same path, it's fine, but all of a sudden in August 2017, I'm going to go a different direction. 
And you said, how am I showing up in the world? And, and something happened over those days that came up to that point where you finally woke up that morning, I'm going to do it and I'm going to quit and go this different direction. So what I'm kind of curious is when people say the no, no, one of the number one regrets of the dying is I wish I'd taken more chances. So people don't. And that's why we think sometimes when we relate to a lot of entrepreneurs, I think, gosh, isn't everybody in the world an entrepreneur? But in truth, it, it's probably 5% of the population or something, or it's probably 90% of the people are, are working for somebody else as an example. So what, what are some, maybe some tips having gone down that road and, and been able to make that shift. And then even the traveling around the world, that's so great. I want the kids to be global citizens of the world. That's incredibly cool for you and your wife and your kids too. But for the person that's out there listening, that's in that similar situation up to those 10 years of August of 2017, what tips could you give them or here you need to do these three steps or four steps or something to maybe have the guts to do what you did? Because I think it's extremely impressive because it's so much easier to stay the course, not take any chances, status quo. We've heard all the terms instead of taking the, the road less traveled, I guess, was a book once written. What, what are some things you'd say to people, Chris, to encourage them to do what Chris did? Well, first of all, I would not recommend quitting your job. <laughs> I oh, do okay. not necessarily think that that was the right move, uh, but it was the move that I took in my pain at my level of awareness at the time. Um, now, quitting your job might be the answer, but I would not necessarily say that is the answer. I think the first courageous thing to do is to ask yourself a very <clears throat> important question. Um, that I think many people ask it in a certain way, but they, they, they limit it. And this question is, what would I love? Mm. Now, asking the question, what would I love, is a little bit different than what could I do? So what could I do is couched in this circumstance. What could I do given I have X, Y, Z? and um, this job, the, these payments, these kids, these, you know, um, all the circumstances are, are a part of what could I do? But the question that I'm asking is, let's for a moment, use this uh, in, in powerful superpower that we have it, uh, in all humans is called your imagination. And can we ask the question, what would I love? And as you ask this question, what would I love? You can dream of and imagine what it looks like to, to, to experience a thing that you would love. And I think the thing about, I know this is a big question, what would I love? But I think what it gets to, and what I found this question to be so important is it gets to your values. What is important to you? So as you imagine something that you love, then you're actually accessing this very important question that you may not have actually been true to yourself about. And that is, what is important to me? What's important to me, David Brooke? What is important to me? And as you start to access, you know, what is truly important to me, not my, my mother or my, my, my boss or whoever else, then you get to, okay, this is important to me. This is what I would really love. If I could create something in the world, this is exactly what I would create. And now that is going to direct you. Am I going to stay in the job that I'm in? Am I going to, and maybe you will. And I, maybe I could have and shown up in a different way at the job because now I have a purpose or I know exactly what I'm holding is what's important to me. And now I'm going to show up differently and I'm going to make sure that I'm taking the other courageous steps to live in alignment with my heart and my mind. And I think that that, that is often where people have pain and that is that their mind is reasoning things that oh, I got to stay in this job but my heart is out of the job. I'm just not living my life at all while I'm at this job. Now, maybe you can align your heart with your mind in the same job because you see that the job is, is serving the purpose of your mission. That's a possibility. Or maybe you see that's not the right job for me. I need to go somewhere else. So I think the first step is really having the courage to ask yourself what would I really love. And like, and I like, oh, I like, sorry, Chris, I was, I like to the fact what would I love? I, I think there's a distinction between that and what would I love to do, which you have people say, it's kind of like somebody once said to me, uh, when you go up to meet somebody, Chris, Dave, Dave, Chris, Dr. E, nice to meet you. And what's the person I'll say, what do you do? 
And so immediately we establish a label. Oh, I'm a garbage man or I'm a brain surgeon, you know, and, and now we have this, this, con this conversation that goes a different direction. But somebody once said to me, I have a better question for you. You just add a couple of words, you know, nice to meet you, Chris. Uh, what do you like to do? And now it's a whole different answer and a whole different conversation. But coming back to a couple of your points, and I put here for a purpose, a dream or a new direction, uh, I don't recommend quitting your job. I think that's just great practical advice because the bills still have to be paid. And so if you can take your vocation is what you're doing, and then your avocation is what you, your vocation you do eight to five, your avocation you do five to eight. And so you work on that on the evenings and weekends. And then when you get the new thing planted, established, and maybe the money or however that works for you, then you can go ahead and quit the vocation, the basic job. But that ask yourself, what would I love? Uh, and it gets to the values. And I think really understanding some of these values is important. One of the things that I tell people is so important. I think what you're saying is absolutely on point. But then I'll say, okay, so what are my next steps? Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things I've just loved to say, I always take lots of notes. I use the eight and a half by 11, you know, yellow pads, legal pads or whatever they are, is let's get a pad and paper and let's get a pen and let's start putting some things down. And I'll say, let's do it over the course of a week or five days or two weeks or whatever, because you're not going to think of everything at one sitting. And so what are those things you love to do? So it, I feel that's so important because if somebody says, I want to lose 10 pounds, well, that's fantastic. You know, that's, that's the end result of the goal, but how are you going to do it? Well, I'm going to do 10 pushups a day. I'm going to walk two miles a day. I'm going to drink a gallon of water. I'm going to limit my calories to seven, you know, and then give me the steps. In fact, I like this. I, I, I've got to commit this to memory because I really like it. It says how to make dreams come true. So if it's a new direction or a new career or a new purpose, that would be a dream. And it says a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A plan with action taken makes your dream come true. And so it's, it's really make, uh, kind of breaking down into those nuggets and so on. But, but how would you help people understand their values? Because that's such a great word. But what would you, how would you coach them around what they think their values are? I think that is, you know, well, I think there, a, a very concrete way is um, to actually just get a list of values in front of you. Mm. And then just to circle the top 10 and then to circle two from there and then to try it on, you know, so, and that might be trying it on for a week or a year or whatever, you know, this year I chose connection and growth as my two values. And I'm just trying to see what that is for me for this year. And, you know, values are, are something it's not like I hold this value and that's it, right? It's, about what am I putting my attention on right now? What am I deciding to put my attention on right now? And for me, my attention is on connection. So I'm, I'm seeing in ways as I'm going through the day and I'm living into this value and it happens to be my top value right now, how I can connect with people in a more loving way, in a more um, affirming way, in a more um, empowering way with people. Um, also, how am I going to connect with myself? Because there's many aspects of myself that I want to connect to. Uh, a part of myself that I want to connect to also is living in gratitude. And so that's how am I going to connect to that part of myself? So I guess I would say that there is no correct answer when you say, you know, what are your values? You know, um, your values are what you are going to choose for today and what you're going to try to live into for a period of time and um and your values can change as you as you change i'm sure your values have changed when you were younger you had certain value yeah. and then now today you you have different values and next year you're going to have values that you're going to be focusing on so the most concrete way i think is just to have a list to choose your top 10 that come on the top of your head choose to choose not reveal, but choose, mm -hmm. and then go and live in those in, into those values. It's a choice, you know. It's not something that you're like. Um, it's not just there, you know. And you know, I was just thinking too. I always put in uh, show notes. I'll put in your website and email and things like that. But I've also got a document that I've got to think I can uh, cut and paste. I think I'll put it in the show notes, and it's a uh, values uh, sort of a starts out with like shows you 100 values and then you drop it down to 10 and then the six 
and then to either two or three. So yeah. you, you start with all those values and I'll put that in the show notes. Cause that's a great exercise just to find out what you are or what, where your values are, but it gives you all those choices. And then you go down to the 10 and the six and the two or the three, which would be really, really helpful. So, um, well, we're not, we don't have a ton of time left and I want to make sure I touch on just a little bit more about the brave thinking Institute. Tell me a little bit about its purpose. Well, the Brave Thinking Institute is a location that I was certified in where I was first coached. And it is the program that in which I coach from. And I would love to be able to reach out to people who are interested in experiencing more fulfillment in their life every day. That's something that I believe in that, um, you know, people often are thinking about this word nirvana or bliss and um, as if it's something that you only attain after you do all this work and then all of a sudden you arrive there. But I don't believe that. I actually believe that you, I, that I actually experienced nirvana today and that you, David, have also experienced nirvana or experienced deep bliss in your life. And that's something that we have experienced and that we can experience to a greater degree every day. So, and I think gratitude is, is a big part of accessing that. And so part of my mission is helping people to experience that every day while also clarifying their values and what that, how those values actually look as a video in the future. Um, because there is the what, and this is what I think is important, is to know what it is that you would love to experience and what it looks like in the future and the how. And, you know, so you, you talked a little bit about the how, like the, the setting the goals and then, you know, the days. And the, so that's the how. And we don't always know the how, but we first need to set the, the what first. And then, you know, the Brave Thinking Masters or the Brave Thinking Institute that I coach span that gap, right? So now I'm here. This is what I love. This is my values. This is what it looks like on video. And then what I help people to do through these programs is to take those micro steps and being able to tolerate some of the things that you have to do that you're gonna have fear around and fail because fail is requirement for you to continue to progress um, and then eventually experience the results they want in their life. Excellent. And speaking of that too, I was gonna to mention at the end, but this is a perfect segue. Uh, I'll put this in the show notes for all the listeners and viewers. And that's uh, Chris is offering a complimentary strategy session. And I'm having to talk about it just in a second. It said, these are 45 minute phone conversations where we get clear on exactly where you are, what you love to create and the next most important step you can take that will move you in the direction of your dream. So just mention a little bit about that, Chris, that sounds really cool. Oh yeah. Thank you for asking me about that. Yeah. I mean, I just love to get a chance to learn about people and their life and where they're going and what it's so what's important for them. And so these sessions are 45 minutes, usually sometimes a little bit longer. And it's really for people to, to just get a little bit deeper into understanding their purpose as they understand it right now, and then to bring even greater clarity to what their purpose is in their life. There's a really interesting study um, th that looked at people who have purpose and wake up with purpose every day and that they've looked at how long they live compared to people who don't have this 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 understanding of their purpose and they live seven years longer on average which is a, is similar to quitting smoking i mean this is the power of, of 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 having purpose in one's life and purpose drives the possibility of experiencing even greater fulfillment during your day um, so in this strategy session, or in this, I like to call it the purpose and, and progress session, um, we get to learn a little bit more about what purpose you experience in your life right now, what you would love to experience, and then how to make the, um, the, the, the next step for the progression of that. Excellent. Excellent. So, and again, uh, for the viewers and listeners, I will put that in the show notes too, and there'll be a link to that so you can connect with Chris because that's uh, that's really neat. And I think a lot of people are out there back to those five regrets of the dying. I think there's a lot of people out there that want to make the move, but just don't have the courage. I mean, it is a courage thing that takes to to go a different direction. Like Chris says, you know, don't quit your job, but keep the money so we don't have the pressure. I think when uh, my suspicion is when people wake up in the middle of the night and they can't sleep, I'd say probably the leading candidate for why they can is money. So if you, if you want to make a change, keep the money at least coming in and so forth too. But so we're going to wrap up in just a second. And so I can't, uh, I can't let you go about without talking about earlier in your life when you were 
uh, dancing and doing different things and teaching the Lindy Hop. Tell the tell the viewers a little bit about that. That's going to bring a smile to my face. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, the Lindy Hop is the original swing dance. So if you know what swing dancing is, then you are going to um, recognize that the most the the origin of swing dancing came from Harlem, New York, in the 1930s and 1940s, and um, it was an African American dance called the Lindy Hop. And I did that for um, I actually. Um, left medical school for two years to become an international Lindy Hop dancer and teacher and um, performer. And it was actually one of the most amazing parts of my life. Uh, I, I, don't, I didn't realize it at the time, but it was a, a chance for me to connect with people to um, just experience this, this, this joy um, inside of me and to be able to express it in a, in a musical and a physical way. Um, and to introduce other people to the same. And in a way, through coaching, I, I am doing the same thing as I introduce a way for people to experience life more fully. Um, you know, it may not be through dancing, but it's certainly through the thing that you love. And somehow hearing you say that reminds me of an old adage when I was growing up, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. It was something words to that effect. And I just think it's so important to have a blend of work. And um, it, it's the same thing with those uh, the bombardment we get with our brain and it gets hit by all these things and give your, your, your brain a break. And so whether it's the Lindy Hop or, or uh, you know, recreation or running or, or exercise or hobbies or whatever it might be, I think it's so important. So well, Chris, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I always wrap up my guests uh, with the last question I have, and you get to pick one thing, and that is, is what's the one thing you know today that would have helped you so much more if you knew this when you were 18 years old? If I knew if I was 18 years old, hmm. that would be, I, I would have to say that it's really around the growth mindset. And what I mean by that is that trust yourself to go forward with what you love and know that in that journey, you're going to do your best with what you have and you're going to not do a good job at it at first. You're gonna fall on your face. You're gonna look like a fool and you're gonna fail at times. But that's okay, because the greatest value is not whether you look good or you look bad, but that you're making progress towards the thing that you think is worthy and important in your life. And that to embrace, embrace failure, in a way, um, as a, thank goodness, I, I got that, that failure all the way, because now I've learned to move into the next step. And um, yeah, so I think the growth mindset would probably be something I would have Excellent. loved to have had in my 18 years, when I was 18. Great takeaway is growth mindset. Trust yourself. You will fail along the way. I have a good friend that says fail is an acronym for first attempt and learning. And I think it's so there's a lot of acronyms out there in the world, of course, but I, I've often believed I noticed this in my life, seven decades on the planet is you just can't appreciate up until you've seen down. And so it's just part of the journey. So with that, I will uh, have some great takeaways. And again, thank you so much for being a guest, Chris. And let me mention again that my podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. Always appreciated. Purchase a gratitude journal and find out more about my gratitude speaking or coaching or one-on-one -on -one or group coaching. You can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. Also, a lot of people ask me about my Monday morning minute. I send out a 60-second video every Monday. You can get that by texting 22828. That's five digits, 22828. And in the message box, put in gratitude guy. And that'll get you hooked up for the Monday morning minute. And also as an exclusive for my podcast listeners, I'm offering my six month proprietary gratitude coaching program that can transform your life for the three month price. If you are a listener to the program, just email me and let me know you heard about it on the podcast. So finally, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And until next time, I'm that gratitude guy. And always remember these words, remember, be grateful and never quit. So long. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us. 
and you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.